Hello, tiny friends. Welcome back to Tiny Keyhole Minis. I'm Jolene. Today I'm going to show you the hair that I'm going to use for the old lady in the Josephine house. And um, I'm going to do some experimenting. So I'm going to show you some techniques that I've learned and um, what ideas that I have as far as creating her hair or some of the ideas. Um, the hair that I purchased is called Tibetan lamb hair. It's a real hair and it's on a real hide. You can wash it and condition it. You can curl it and straighten it and flat, flat iron it. Um, so it's pretty manageable. I purchased a couple different options. Um, I purchased this hair from a website called Morse More, and my good friend Gianna from Montarsi's Miniatures sent me over there. This is the same type of hair that she uses for her dolls. And if you are working on a budget like I am, you might want to check out this website because it is great as far as prices and they have huge deals. And we're going to go over some of that stuff. So on their, on the website, uh, they offer two quality types of the type bet and lamb hair. They offer premium and they offer second. Uh, these two pieces that you see are their second quality. I did purchase both because I wanted to see the difference myself and I wanted to share that with you. I'm the type of person that needs to see the size and feel and touch the item in person. Um, so it can be kind of difficult to purchase something online. These two pieces also came from a purchasing option they have called Remnants Pack. So in a Remnants Pack, you will get six cuts of hair per color. And they cost $3.59. And each cut of hair has a lot of hair on it. They are not skimpy cuts, tiny friends. They're all different size cuts because they're basically scrap cuts, but there's a lot of hair for $3.59, I promise you. Um, in their remnants pack, they offer the second quality type. And, but you know what, tiny friends? I think there might be some premium type in these packages as well because some of this stuff feels really soft and silky like the premium type. Uh, the difference with the second type quality is that it's a variety of textures and lengths. So in their remnants pack, when or when you're getting a piece of second quality, uh, you're going to get a variety of that in one piece. You might not get all of the textures, but you might get a piece that has two different lengths. You might get a piece that has... Um, some part of it really soft and silky and another part coarse or dreaded or there may be a couple pieces that are ratted um, but again that's all okay because this is real hair and it's manageable they also tell you on the website how you can bring their second quality back to life and bring beauty back into it so no worries tiny friends right I'm showing you two different pieces of the Remnants pack. I purchased three colors in the Remnants pack so that you can see here's a second color, a second piece, and it still has a lot of hair on it. Now, I've already begun to comb this blonde hair. It's actually called a beige blonde, and the gray is a charcoal gray. I've already begun to comb some of it, so you can see some of it's a little frizzy, that's from me combing it out. When you comb it out, it is going to be frizzy. If you want those curls to come back, you just wet it and they'll come right back in. But you just have to be super careful about wetting the hide because it will shrink um, when it dries if it gets too wet. I'll show you a few more samples of the remnants in a little bit. But um, I just wanted to go over a little bit of these you know, of this. You can see they're both different types of cuts, but you get 
plenty of hair and for three dollars and 59 cents that is a great deal because you don't need a lot of hair when you're creating miniature dolls so in the remnants pack i purchased the beige blonde the charcoal gray and a raven black and this is all the hair from the three colors of the remnants packs so look at all this hair tiny friends this is a lot of hair and I tried to stick with the basic colors because I want to make two more dolls and I want to be able to use these colors that I purchased not only that I'll be blending some of these colors together so a lot of hair tiny friends right I'm gonna have hair forever okay these are their sample packs they're three dollars and 49 cents so just a 10 cent difference between the two packages i believe they offer both qualities but this quality is their premium quality with their sample packs you will get one cut piece um, if it's premium it will be a consistency of quality all the way through it's soft it's silky and you'll get a two by two cut so two inches by two inches um, some of the remnants pieces are the same size just a shorter length in hair but uh, this color is a coffee brown and then I also purchased a silver gray I like the coffee brown even though you would think it was a darker brown it's more of a faded brown and it's gonna be perfect for the look I'm trying to achieve for the old lady of the Josephine house and my idea is to blend some of these colors together um, for the silver gray it's the same thing it's a two by two cut um, for their sample pieces um, I was thinking I can take the two grays and the two tones of grays blend them together to make the gray hair have some dimension and look a bit more realistic here I'm just showing you um, that these two cuts are the same size as far as measurements just the shorter length like I spoke about previously and tiny friends if you know me by now I am NOT gonna throw that hide away I promise you I will try to use this hide on something I don't know what but when I am finished cutting off all the hair from one of the pieces I just can't see myself throwing that away so I'm gonna try to find something to make with this hide okay so blending the two these two colors together with the coffee brown and the beige blonde absolutely gorgeous tiny friends these two colors uh, complement each other very well even in real life when you're going to the salon to get your hair done these two colors are fabulous together this hair gel is from their website as well and Gianna recommended that I get some it's five dollars and about five dollars and fifty cents and it will last forever because you only need a very tiny bit of this now I'm sure you can use another type of hair product another type of hair gel or any type you may have on hand but uh, this on the website was suggested for the hair and also for needle felting so if anybody does needle felting uh, they have uh, an example of a needle felted rat with a before and after picture so you can see the difference using this gel so it is listed under needle felting this is item number M01315 if anybody was interested in that but I'm gonna list all of this information in the description box below and I will also show you the order form and then you can pause the screen if you'd like so this is the order that I purchased um, if anybody is interested in this you can pause the screen write some of this information down or you can just go to the description box below and I will have everything listed there as well okay so for the premium piece to give you a closer look 
uh, it's pretty soft and silky. You can see the length and it's a little more straighter on the top and more curly on the bottom. You can cut from wherever you want depending on what you're looking for. Um, but it's really a lovely piece of hair. And again, it is real hair, animal hair. Um, so I, I'm glad that I purchased this. I really am. Um, I will maybe try other types of hair later on down the road because I really do want to try viscous. But I know that this is real hair. Um, here's a piece of the Black Raven. And you can see on one piece it has different textures. So more kinky and curly and a little more straight and silky. And you can see the different lengths as well. Um, here's a different piece of Black Raven. And these are both remnant pieces. And you can see what this piece looks like. So you get a lot of hair on one of these remnant pieces. And you get six pieces. Here's a different cut on the Beige Blonde. Look how much hair you're getting on this piece. And you, if you like them curly pieces, you can wet the hair and it'll kink right back up. So uh, to begin with, I'm going to use some of my brand new, I got a set of brand new makeup brushes that I have dedicated to my crafting. And I'm going to use these for the brushes. This is an eyebrow brow and eyelash brush. And I thought they would be gentle enough to comb through the hair and use as brushes and combs on this hair. And now this hair will shed. I've gotten it all over. It will be all over your clothes. It will be all over your workspace. So just be aware of that. This hair will be everywhere. So I'm going to begin with just combing it, brushing it just a little bit, just to smooth it out and straighten it out a little bit so that it can be a little easier for me to slice micro thin slices. Now, if you don't know what a hair weft is, it's just the little piece that you're going to create to attach to the doll head with the glue when you're gluing. Uh, making doll wigs, that's a whole nother ball game. <laughs> I haven't explored that yet. But I'm just using a little nail head pin, like a little jewelry bead pin and normally when you want to make a regular weft you would cut a thicker piece uh, maybe not this thick I'm not sure I'm just experimenting um, but if you're going with just a solid piece of color you would make a little thick piece slice it probably about this thick and then you would cut that off and attach it to the glue, which I'm going to show you how to do. But I am blending these colors together. So I have to make micro slices to layer them together. So I'm going to be using a little more glue than you would normally use if you're just doing one solid color on a hair weft. So about this much for a single solid color. But the step is going to be basically the same. I'm going to go in and slice a very micro thin slice and I'll show you exactly how thin it's going to be. So it's pretty easy to just go in and separate and part the hair. Just make sure you have something really fine. A toothpick might even work, you know, a little pin or a needle. Just something super fine to get in there to part the hair that you want to cut off. Also make sure you have yourself a pair of very sharp scissors. So this is about how thin my slices need to be because I am layering three different colors on one piece of hair. But I am going to do some um, examples of two colors. Now the website recommends you use fabric tack glue for the hair, but I have also seen other makers use tacky glue. So um, you can use tacky glue as well, uh, but the fabric tack is a really, really quick drying glue and it's pretty thick. 
Um, you just want to give yourself a nice little strip. And I am using a piece of freezer paper. It has one side coated with wax. So if you have wax paper, that'll work as well too. But you want to use something that has a, co a wax coating on it. So this piece is actually freezer paper and I'm just using the wax coated side. Once you get your little strip of glue down, you want to cut your hair slice and you want to cut it as close to the hide as you possibly can get it. So cut that piece right down to the hide. And make sure you're holding it nice and tight. I probably could have cut it a little bit closer on that one, but this is my very first cut. So you got a good amount of hair, whether it's one solid color or you want to blend. And if you want to blend, then I'm doing the blending technique. And you just lay that right down on your glue. Now for one solid color, this is it. That's it. You let it dry. One strip of glue, set down your piece, let it dry. Okay, so now I am taking a micro slice of the silver gray, which is the premium piece. The first slice that I took off was the charcoal gray from the remnants pack. And I'm just gonna play with this a little bit, use different colors, see how it looks. Um, I have so much hair and I need to experiment to see what I like and what's gonna work and what's gonna look good or to discover what exactly it is that I'm looking for. I have it in my head, but I still have to experiment to figure out how to create what is in my head for the old lady's hair. So I got a micro thin slice of the silver gray and each slice is gonna take a little more glue. Now at this point, I'm not showing you that I'm sliding my finger upward to smooth the glue out because I haven't figured that out yet at this point. I was just starting. So as we go along, when we're learning or we're doing something for the first time, we figure out what works for us. We figure out new ways. We have ideas and um, it's all trial and error, right, tiny friends? Uh, we get into our niche as well and things start to flow once we settle on, you know, the decision, the decisions that work best for us. So I'm going to see what the beige blonde looks like and I'm just going to lay it on top just to get a visual, just to see, do I like how that looks or, you know, it helps you decide whether or not you want to go with that. I chose not to. I went right back to the charcoal gray. So I'm just repeating the steps and I am alternating each color. But you can't know unless you, you know, place pieces around to, to get a visual on everything, tiny friends. So you just have to play around, move things around, lay things on top of each other. It really helps you get that visual on whether or not you want to go with that. I chose to go back to the charcoal gray. So this must be one of the hair weft pieces that I'm making that are just gray and the two tones of gray to create some sort of dimension. And you can create bigger pieces, you can create smaller pieces, you can cut down your bigger pieces. I know you don't really wanna go super thick on the pieces as far as the hair, because when you're laying them on the dowel and if you're going 112, it's a pretty small head. So when you lay your pieces down, they're gonna layer up and that volume is going to grow and you're going to, you know, the hair is going to create volume as you're layering. So keep your volume pretty thin, but you can, as far as your piece sizes, you can do variety and, and make various sizes. Okay, so I'm going to switch up the colors and I'm going to do some brown and blonde. And I'm not going to do all of the wefts with you. I'm just going to do some and then show you in the end what I've done. Because I want to show you another technique that you can do as well with this doll hair. So um, I think I'm actually going to start with the 
the brown, not the blonde. Yeah, uh, I was looking forward to seeing what these two colors were going to look like together. And look at that, tiny friends. Imagine your dolls having that hair, the sample hair with the, the premium sample pieces. Just gorgeous, beautiful. So I'm going to go in with a micro slice and I'm using my hair knowledge now, tiny friends. <laughs> So this is just experience from actually foiling hair in the salon. But I'm going to go ahead and make a couple of these. I'm going to layer them the same exact way that I did with the gray. I'm just going to try and get more of a thinner slice than I did with the gray. Okay, I'm going to go in with the blonde, and I'm noticing that some of the pieces are a little more easier to slice than others. This one, the curls go right up to the hide, so you can, if you get a piece like that, you can comb it out to try and smooth it down a little, make it a little bit easier for you to slice through. I really didn't do that on this. So I'm um, just taking a little longer to get that slice out of here. But that was definitely one helpful tip that I learned was to comb out the section first that you want to slice out um, unless you're going with a premium because that's already kind of smooth and straight towards the top. So here's the blonde piece. I'm using very, very little. And don't worry about what the tops of these wefts are looking like right now because when I peel it off, I'm able to trim it down and even it up and get myself a nice little piece that I can glue to the head. So here is where I'm beginning to smooth that, that glue upward to flatten it out just a little more. And I found that worked really well for me. It, it, kept that glue nice and thin. Okay, so these pieces are dry. I'm going to peel them off to show you how easy it is. And I'm actually going to add more hair to the brown wefts a little bit later because they're a little thinner than I want them to be. But again, I'm just experimenting and I'm showing you. So it just peels off super easy. And you have that little glue film on the back side. Now you can go ahead and trim it up, clean it up real nice. But you can see the two tones of gray. I believe I might have added a couple more layers onto this as well. But I did cut this piece down in the end to tiny little pieces where I can just glue them in where I want them to be. So she has little strips of gray. Um, what I'm going for, the look I'm going for is I want her hair to look, I want her natural color to look like it's fading in and aging into the gray. So she will still have a little bit of her natural color left. And then you'll see some of this blonde beige, and then you'll see some of the gray in her hair. And I'm going to show you what that looks like in the end. Um, but that's kind of what I'm seeing in my head and how I want her hair to be. I want her hair to be aging as well. So I'm trying to show you what the two color blends look like, uh, but you'll get a better view of this in a little bit. Okay, so here are a couple more of the brown and blonde wefts. And at this point, I'm beginning to get a little bit better at this. Um, I even use um, a toothpick to glide that glue up instead of my finger. But here I'm using my finger to kind of glide that glue upward and thin it out. Um, and I think I actually begin to add a little bit of gray to these wefts. 
So it does get easier as you go along. Like I said in the beginning, you get, you know, your niche and you start moving along the more you, you know, you're at it. So I'm going to come back to the other technique that I'd like to show you. I'm actually waiting on a phone call right now, tiny friends. Uh, my daughter had another ultrasound today where she will know for sure what the baby is. If we're having a boy or a girl, uh, they think it's a boy, but today is confirmation day. So the suspense is killing me. <laughs> so I'm going to move on and show you the other technique that I was actually working on. Okay, tiny friends. Um, as soon as I said that, my daughter called me. We are having another boy. So I will be having my second grandson. And just ex as excited because I got to see the ultrasound pictures and the little cheeks are so cute. You just want to pinch them and kiss them already and smush them. So... Yes, we're having another boy. <laughs> so going back to uh, this technique, I'm going to make some curls. And I'm using some hairspray. I have Rave on hand, um, but you can use any really good hairspray. I would recommend Rave or Aquanet. I feel like they're kind of like the same quality. Uh, they're both vintage hairsprays. Um, not that that matters, but <laughs> I love vintage stuff. Um, and I'm also going to use uh, some of the gel. And I'm going to do some experimenting. So I'm going to see if they work the same, if one works better than the other. I'm going to use some of these tools from my sculpting tool set. And um, I think I'm going to go with the smaller sticks. I think I'm going to use this and the black one. I don't use these tools for sculpting. So I thought, why not use them to make curls? So that is what I'm going to do. I have taken a couple um, pieces that I made and I have cut them into smaller pieces. So I'll be using these. Oh my goodness, another boy, tiny friends. Well, you know what? We have plenty of boy toys in my house. My grandson has enough toys for three or four boys and multiple ride-on machines. And so there's going to be plenty. And I refuse to get rid of this stuff because it can be passed down. With my sons, I passed down their stuff to my nephews. So that stuff got plenty of use and the money's worth. Especially those power wheels. They're expensive. You know, pass them down to your nephews or the next kids in line in your family and get your money's worth. Okay, so I am using a very little bit. I, I probably used a little more than I need to, but I'm using a very little bit of gel. And I'm just smoothing this down, try and get it more manageable, because the second quality, hair quality, uh, is a little more coarser and a little more out of whack. So <laughs> this stuff works great to kind of keep that hair in line and make it more manageable. Okay, tiny friends, I am going to try two different rolling techniques uh, just to see if there's a difference. Uh, remember, I'm experimenting, so this is part of that. Um, I'm going to use the blue stick for the gel and the black stick for the hairspray so I don't get confused. And um, the first roll or the first curl I'm going to make, I decided to make this one a spiral curl. So uh, what I'm going to do is actually just spiral it and tighten it up. And I'll show you what that looks like here. And once I get that nice and tight, I'm just going to take a little bit of painter's tape and I'm going to stick it to the tab and then tape it around the stick, not on the hair itself because when I pull that tape off I don't want it to misshape the curl I want that curl to stay into place without any disruption and I suppose using a tiny little mini clip 
or mini clothespin or something like that would work a little easier because you're not working with tape. So if you have some of those around and you're trying this, you might want to use those. Uh, but I have the tape on hand right here. A lot of times I just don't want to get up and go look for stuff, tiny friends. So I use what I have sitting around me. But by all means, a little mini clip or a little mini clothes pin will work just fine. Then you won't have to worry about that tape getting stuck to the hair. So this is the spiral curl. And then I'm going to do another one I think I'm gonna use the hairspray I think I just go back and forth so with the hairspray I'm actually spraying it on the tray and I'm gonna use a q-tip and then I am just gonna run the q-tip right down that hair just a couple times and you can spray the hair from a distance you don't want to douse the hair with the hairspray um, just a couple swipes of this q-tip and you can see it works just fine But if you don't want to do all that just give it a little spray lay it on your Wax paper and comb it out or smooth it out light layers of hairspray on little pieces like this will dry really quick So you want to make sure that your piece is nice and damp, but not you know drenched with the hairspray um, You don't want it to be like super stiff where it you can see how stiff it is. You still want it to be flexible. So you just have to learn your control and amount as you go along if you've never done this before. So again, I'm just wrapping this from the tail end around the black piece, nice and tight. And once I get this started, um, I'm going to begin to roll it up. And I'm not quite sure yet uh, which one I'm doing, whether I'm doing the spiral or just the roll up like a regular hair roller. Um, okay, so it looks like I am doing the spiral first where I am just spiraling it around that stick, not around itself. Once I get that nice and tight, again, I will tape that down and I'm going to jump forward a little bit. Okay, so I'm going back to the gel and I'm doing the roll up like if you were rolling your hair in a roller. And the reason why I went back and forth is because I am experimenting, so I'm not I'm thinking of these things as I'm going along. So this wasn't something that I already had planned ahead and knew exactly what I was going to do. So I'm just as I'm going along, most of these things I'm thinking of in the moment. So um, each stick is going to have a spiral and a roll up, like a hair roller. Um, and I'm going to come back to these when they are dry and we'll see what they look like. Okay, so these pieces are dried. If you are wanting to dry them in a hurry, you don't have any patience. Um, or time to wait for them to dry, hit them with a hair dryer. They'll dry super quickly. I just let them sit and went off and did other things and came back to them. So uh, let's see what they're looking like. Now, when you begin to unravel, you do not want to unwind the hair, loosen the roll up. I'm just gonna give it a couple turns to loosen that up from the stick. And then I'm going to wiggle it out. I'm going to wiggle the stick out of the roll. Um, this way, the little curl will keep its shape. If you unravel that, it might lose its curl um, the way it is on the stick. So you just want to kind of wiggle it out. Give it a little turn. Eventually, it'll come off of whatever stick you're using to roll these and this is the first gel piece. This is the spiral gel curl. And it looks like a little ringlet, but that worked out really well. Now you can use that piece. I'm gonna show you when we get to the doll and I'm actually putting this hair on. I'm gonna show you 
other ways that you can use this curl besides draping it down her head to look like she has long curls. I'm going to list three videos in the description box below. One of them will show you how you can make hair wefts. One of them will show you these techniques that I'm using now and will also show you a technique that I plan on using when I go to add the hair to the doll head. And the other one is going to talk about different kinds of hair. So um, if you're interested and you want to learn more, go check those videos out. Now this actually looks like a spiral curl. It was a little bit thinner of a piece than the other pieces that I was working on. And it's actually the only one that turns out like that. The other two rolls look like the first one. So they come out looking like ringlets. Okay, so there isn't much difference between the two products. I feel like the gel is uh, slightly stronger. It has the hair pieces with the gel have a slighter hold to them. So I'm going to move forward with the gel. I may use the hairspray in the end to give her complete hairstyle a spritz. I may not need to do that because of what I plan on doing to her hair. I'll just have to see when I get to that. But um, out of the two products, they basically work the same. They're doing about an equal amount of hold, but I am thinking that the gel has just a slighter bit of a hold. Okay, tiny friends, to go back to the wefts that I made in the beginning, um, you can see what the back looks like. It's got a little film, kind of like a little flexible film layer um, of the glue. It's very thin, plasticky looking. You can cut these right down to size, clean them up, clean the edges up. Um, I'm trying to show you what the color blend looks like. You can see a little bit how her hair looks like the natural color is aging and fading into the lighter um, non-pigment tones and the grays or whites, whatever color your hair is going to change to. But the whole purpose was to try and get her hair to look like it was aging and that her color was fading so and transitioning into that gray stage of life. So that's what some of it looks like. Um, and I also on the website, they do show you uh, what the hair pieces look like in natural light versus artificial light. So it kind of gives you a little bit of a better idea of what the true color of the hair is going to look like. I mean, it's a phenomenal website to shop on, and they have amazing deals. And if you're working on a low budget, definitely check out Moore's More. You'll find the link in my description box. So thank you so much, Gianna, for turning me on to that website. For people like me that like to ball on a budget. <laughs> So here are just some of the samples I'm just showing you, and you can see the different color blends. Some of them have gray. Some of them are just two colors. Some of them are brown and the blonde. Some are brown, blonde, and gray. And then I have some tiny, tiny pieces that I cut up that are just the gray tones. So I was just playing around and experimenting and seeing what looks good and what I like and uh, giving me ideas of how I want to go about this when I go to add it to her head. Um, and that's just what you got to do, tiny friends. So I really hope you enjoyed this video today. I hope that it is helpful and will help you along the way if you decide on creating your own doll. I can't believe how much I've learned already since creating this doll. In the beginning, I was so intimidated and I was really discouraged. I almost to the point where I don't think, I didn't think I wanted to continue. I was frustrated because I didn't know where to begin. And I 
just searched and kept searching and eventually those answers started to appear and it got easier and now I am this far along and I have learned so much tiny friends that I am sharing everything I learned with you all so do not get discouraged even when you feel like you are keep pushing forward keep moving forward don't let that fear stop you that fear of I don't know where to begin I don't know what to do I don't know how to do this don't let that stop you get on that computer get online get on that internet and start searching you will find your answers and of course I am going to share everything that I learned with you all okay so one more thing I want to say and point out before I say goodbye is do not judge this hair by the way these pieces look I have combed these pieces out I don't want you to look at them and be like oh I don't like the way that hair looks it's frizzy it's coarse it doesn't look pretty it doesn't look good it is because I comb them out I need the old ladies hair to look like this um, you can flat iron them you can straighten them a little bit more you can curl them you can wet them and get those natural kinky curls back in there um, so don't judge this hair type by what these pieces look like okay so with all that said I hope you all have enjoyed this video today I want to thank you all for being here with me I hope it was helpful I hope it may help you later on down the road and please don't forget to hit that like button and give it a thumbs up if you've enjoyed this video and let me know in the comments below what you thought or what your thoughts may be and until next time tiny friends I hope you all have a lovely day and I'll be returning with the old lady's head and we can get this hair on her head so I will see you all on the mini side bye bye